two, four, six, eight. Skip counting is so great. Five, 10, 15, 20. The reasons why? Well, there are plenty. Yes, skip counting. It is a great tool for our kids to have. It really is. Can you skip count? Can you have fun with skip counting? Because today I want to talk about why teach skip counting and give you some activities that are fun to do to help you teach it to your children. Hi, and welcome to Learning Life, and thank you so much for joining me today as we have a little bit of fun looking at skip counting. You know what? I like to have fun. I do. I like to, you know, really learn, push into things, and I also love to just share this stuff with you. And you're thinking, you know what? Yeah, I like to learn, but really, skip counting, do I remember that? You know, I'm not really sure that I fully remember it. I remember the times tables, like learning the times tables, like memorizing them, but I don't really remember learning, like skip counting. And so as I realized that, I'm like, oh, let's touch on some things that maybe you are learning about and you're like, oh, skip counting. And you've come to this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your likes and your subscribes for those of you who have been following me. But if you are new, hey, subscribe. I bring out a new video every week. Well, skip counting. It is a necessary skill for young kids. It really is just as important as knowing their name and knowing the alphabet. Yes, it is a necessary skill. But what is skip counting? Yes, it's counting by numbers other than one. We're not going one, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's two, four, six, eight, or one, three, five, seven, nine. Maybe it's five, ten, you know, all of these different things. And they are very important to be teaching our kids because it's going to help them see the patterns in numbers. Yeah, there are so many patterns out there. It gives a great solid foundation later on for multiplication facts and even our times tables. They said, like, I really just remember them like by rote and I will still often just go through by rote. And then it occurred to me, oh, really, I'm just skip counting. Huh, good to know. And so when we can lay a good foundation for our kids, it's going to set them up for success. I know that that's what I want for my girls. Now, of course, our goal in teaching skip counting is to be able to count forwards and backwards fluently, according to like these groups. And here's a little key. Don't always start at zero. We don't always have to start at the very beginning. You know what? It's a great place to start. But in math, you know what? We don't have to start with a number and, and move on from there. Find those patterns. Fill in the blanks. You know, always have fun with it too, which is why I will now want to bring you eight like different activities that you can use at home with your kids if you're homeschooling or if you just want to have some fun with it about teaching skip counting. And many of these actually involve getting up and moving, which I really believe in. I don't think that we should just be sitting there like at the table with our pencil and paper trying to find that pattern. Let's get our whole body involved. Let's get our senses involved. Let's have some fun with it. First one really is just throwing a ball. I use this a lot when I'm working with younger kids, like in math tutoring, because it's just like, let's get up from the desk. Let's move. So it could be between you and one child, or if there's more of you, you're in a circle and all you're doing is throwing the ball to each other. If it's just you and one child back and forth with that counting, two, four, six, eight. You know, you try to get faster. Can you go backwards? You're just getting outside and getting that whole body involved. So throw a ball. Use manipulatives. This really is just a fancy way of using things that you can move around. You know, you don't have to go out and spend $100 on a math kit. Look in your pantry. Do you have cereal? Do you have like pasta? Do you have pretzels? You know, any of those things. M&Ms. We love using sort of that, the edible manipulatives in our house because after we've done the activity, we get to eat them. But, you know, sticks, rocks, leaves, anything that you can show grouping and then counting. And using manipulatives and grouping for your kids is a great way to see, do they understand the concept of skip counting or are they just really memorizing two, four, six, eight, ten? You know, because yes, rote learning can be good, but if we don't have that understanding, we don't have that solid foundation. So using manipulatives with grouping and counting forwards and backwards is a great thing. Post-it notes. Post-it notes 
great. Also cheap. You know, and this is like, you've got a big wall, like write your numbers and just stick them all up over the wall and have your child like physically going and getting the numbers and putting them in order. And then, you know, counting along, have they, oh, have they missed one? Where is it? Can we put it in? And this is great. Again, it's getting that whole body involved, which is what we want. We're not just sitting there and looking. And just when it's just all over the place, it's allowing for that visual recognition to be able to put it in. So post-it notes, really cheap, really easy, but such a fun way to be practicing skip counting. Jump to it. This is fun. Like it really is. Get outside, grab some chalk and get on the driveway or the footpath or whatever it is. But hey, if you don't have a driveway or a footpath, you can use just pieces of paper or post-it notes and put it on the floor at home. And this is where you're just writing numbers just everywhere. And then you're just getting your child to jump from the number to the number in order, forwards and backwards. So we're counting two. Where's the next number? It's four. Oh, there it is. I'm jumping to four. Oh, I'm jumping to six. And this is great. Again, full body. They're having to look and sort through other numbers that are there. Remember, you want to just be able to put them all out there. And because we don't always want to start at zero. So maybe start at three. And now let's count by threes, you know, that sort of thing. So jump to it. And another great thing to use is like a hopscotch uh, pattern. You can put that down and you can have the numbers there and play hopscotch and practice your skip counting. Sing songs. You know, I realized that I actually haven't written any skip counting songs for my girls. I write a number of songs for them, but I haven't done skip counting ones. But you know what? It's okay. There are a number of great ones out there. The girls sing one about like counting by tens. It's easy to do. And, you know, I try to get it out of my brain sometimes because it just gets stuck there. But I'm going to put a link below and then also on my website of some great skip counting songs because it's just a fun way of doing it. It gets you involved and with music and it's not just that two, four, six, eight. Dot to dot. I always loved dots, dots, you know, like where you go around and you're following the pattern in order to create the picture. Well, it doesn't have to just count by one. Or, you know, sometimes I remember doing it like with the alphabet, like going around, practice your skip counting to create the picture. And then you've got something that you can color. Read skip counting books. Again, yes, there are some great books out there that introduce the concept of skip counting and get you to practice in the story. So yes, you're listening to rich language, you're seeing the pictures, you're hearing a story, but you are also skip counting. So check out my website and I will have some links to some great skip counting books there for you. Speed races. Okay, this is great when you've got some of that skill sort of going up there, speed races. So give a set time, let's say 30 seconds, and we're going to start at five and we're going to count by five and how high can you get in that set time? This is great. Or the other way where it's like, we've got our target, you've got to count to up over 100, the first number past 100, and how long will it take you to count by by fours, you know, all the way up? And then once you've done that, then you get to like, try to beat your own personal time. Like this is great when it's your personal, like, oh, can I do better? You know, can I do this? And it's just fun. Speed races are just a great little way to sort of just get that brain like going and just having some fun with it. If it's stressing your child out, of course, like don't do it. But it's just good to have that fun. Like, oh, how fast can I do it? And sort of setting your own little goals and then trying to beat those. So those are just some activities that you could do for skip counting, but above all with it, like seriously, have fun with it. Skip counting is fun. And remember when we're having fun with those foundational things, our kids aren't really realizing that they're learning. We're not going, you know, we're just going to learn skip counting now. And that's how we do it. No, have fun with it. Why do we need to teach it? Because it is foundational and it is a necessary skill. And can we have fun with it? You betcha. So thank you so much for watching today, 2468. I think that you are great and you are. And thank you to those who are spreading the word about learning life and sharing these videos. And another way that you can get involved and help learning life out is by becoming a champion. 
and you can check that out at patreon.com or you can check out my website where we've got like champions or don't forget about pocket packs, which is units of work that I have created that are just fun thematic units that can really add to your schooling experience at home. You can check that out at my website, learningthis.life. <music>